and welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I'll be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open our studios to the public. For more information, you can go to the website svos.org. Our guest, Dodge Williams, is a creator. He is a doodleist a photographer, and an abstract painter. And he plans to reveal his drawing process as we watch him doodle throughout this episode of Talk Art. So welcome, Dodge. Thanks for having me, Sally. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about how did you begin your creative process? Where does this come from? Well, to be honest, I think it's a very free-flowing process. I usually just pick up a pencil and I begin to kind of just take a line for a walk. Take a line for a walk. Yeah. Interesting. I kind of just let it go and take me places. So did you just start drawing, or did you have any other visual imagery that you were working with? Uh, actually, I was a photographer first. Um, I was really into chasing light around San Francisco, and that really got me just out of the house. And I think that's really inspired me. Um, I think uh, after my camera broke, I kind of had more time mm -hmm. to really focus on my art, my doodling, and my painting. Um, so it was kind of like a message that I just focus more on the on the doodling. I like the idea of chasing art, though. Yeah, I mean, chasing the, light. Yeah, no matter where I go, I try to just have a sketchbook or a camera, you know, just so I can kind of just have time to myself. Well, you plan to start a doodle, so Indeed. you have a blank page. Is there a plan that you start with? Well, I love a blank page because the blank page, you can kind of go anywhere with that. Um, tonight, I think I'll be drawing some shapes, maybe some fingers, some eyes, and uh, hopefully get an abstract looking face. And so you talk and doodle and you can think and process. Oh, I think I can, I can handle that. In fact, I'll start right now. Start right now. Yeah. So how, how do you know where the first line's going to be? Well, I kind of just place it and I try to draw as light as possible. Not as light as possible, but kind of just, you know, an area that I know I can take and uh, well right now it seems like something's happening I got some thumbs and a little pointer finger but you know there's really when when you're drawing and doodling you don't want to really fight your mind you want to just kind of for me at least you kind of want to do what just comes natural so it's kind of a feeling that you have? Yeah, you know, and sometimes I think erasing is a really cool thing because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not just mistakes that happen. Right. It's just you want to overlap things and make perspective, you know, come to life. So as you draw, you overlap and... Yeah, and in fact, I think that erasing is a good thing. And I also think that, like, pen, like pencil drawing and shading, I, I used to do a lot of pen drawings, but having that one line that's a for sure line is kind of nerve wracking, but when you, right. when you can kind of take a step back and just know that nothing's permanent, and you, it's kind of relaxing. And what is the purpose of these doodles? Well, I kind of have, I kind of try to fill as many sketchbooks up as I can per month and kind of take maybe, I get five good drawings out of 50 usually. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, you know, maybe 5% to 10% of my drawings actually go to paintings. So this is your exploration of ideas. Exactly. You know, I never know where I'm going to end up, but it's the, like, like you said, the exploring part of it is so fun to me. Okay, so we have some images of some completed paintings that you've done that Indeed. started as a doodle like this. Yeah, exactly. So let's take a look at those now. Cool. Ooh, Lost in Space. This is actually one of my first drawings or paintings I ever did. Um, the whole point of this one was the perspective and distance. And I think it's really neat when you can make a flat canvas look like it goes back five feet, ten feet, right. thousands of feet. And the whole idea that you can make space and you jump like these souls, I call them souls, they're jumping through space. But realistically, they're all on the same surface. Interesting. So the, the little white figures. Yeah, I, I lack a lack of color inside of them. I don't like... Oh, I not think, white. Not white. I think there's a lot of color behind it, and I think that it, the canvas itself is white. So it's just using the canvas to okay. my... To my Interesting. Yeah. Oh, entanglement. This is one that I... When I made this one, I wanted 
people to really understand, like, feel it because everyone at some point in life they can really sense a uh, you know entanglement you know people pulling them money money pulling them in different directions their job you know they have right. all these questions um, and sometimes I actually made this one because all those souls are actually yourself so that's ah. just it may it also it's all your friends and family but it's also yourself doing that to you I do like that they have shadows in this one and this, this goes with entanglement, heart repair. And I really like heart repair, actually, because um, without, without a heartbreak, you can't have heart repair. And people, there's two ways to look at this. You know, okay. some people look at it and they think, oh, you know, that's a broken heart. But realistically, that, those are souls mending. So it's, it's what action you, like, you, action you like to see. Are they putting it together or are they pulling it apart? Exactly. Or both. Oh, look at that one. So that one's interesting. Yeah, there's many shapes in that one, but I really wanted to focus on black and white and straight lines. This is one of my first ones that I did without. I used tape in the beginning of my career, but this one was all just hand hand lines, and I really wanted to work with just two colors. And the basis of it was it was really fun to do, but it's really particular when you're only using a certain amount of colors. Right. Um, you have to be really, really just exact with the line work. It seems like they go back into the distance, but also sort of over and under the canvas. Parts are sticking out. That's interesting. I like that one. It's crazy what two colors can really do. Yes. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Ooh, and this is the second one. I actually made this one after the, uh, the one before this. Um, but I really like the background, how the green and the vibrancy of it, it reminds me of a kind of a lava lamp. But <laughs> the, the the red lines around it I really like it makes it pop out a little more yeah that really focuses the the eye towards the center helping hands a lot of people really really just um, they can relate to this for some reason and I, I can see why because it, it I think they have people in their lives that actually help them get to places certain destinations and uh, I like how the the perspective of this again you know the flat surface but you right. can turn a flat surface into so many different dimensions right and, and that's not <laughs> like normal perspective either sort of but well, not exactly and I would like to think so I would like to think so but yeah well, I, there's some slanted going up and it, interesting it, there's actually a straight flat line right in the middle of the canvas if you can notice yes. and that that was my starting point for that and I kind of went this, this slanted lines, you know, going the opposite ways and going downwards. Right. And that was the beginning of that. But helping hands, I think it's really cool when you can have a really colorful piece of art as well as just souls showing that idea right. of helping. Interesting. The spiral. Yeah. This, so you can see kind of a consistency throughout the work with these souls. But this one has colorful souls in this one. And I just wanted to throw in a different, you know, kind of idea, you know, play with color in a sense, but there's also a white spiral. So you kind of throw the different color schemes into there. Do you pick your palettes ahead of time? I actually don't. I, I like oh. to just go natural Wait. with that. Oh, this is the great escape, actually. This is one of my, I did a painting of this, but I wanted to put it on a jacket too as well. Um, I really like the idea of people kind of like, kind of daydreaming and kind of like looking over the edge, right. kind of trying to get to that next place. So what's going on in front of this person? Hmm. <laughs> and this looks like a studio. Yeah, this was actually my studio of last year. Um, last year I had a studio for about five months and I was lucky enough to have open studio every week and uh, people came in and got to, got to see it. So you opened your studio for people to come every yeah, week? Yeah, exactly. It was a really fun time. People had, people seemed to, you know, really enjoy it. Um, I got to have all my pieces up, and I also uh, got to uh, paint downstairs in my my little mini studio. Very you know, nice. Got to explore a lot. I like that curved wall. Yeah. Well, you have something that is the next step, a three-dimensional idea that you're working on. So let's take a look at your painted boxes. Yeah, I call this box art. It's a an idea that I had. It's a little mock-up. It's about five feet tall. Um, the idea is that these will be wooden boxes in the future, actually. So I plan to have these boxes are about two feet tall. I want to do about five feet wide and five feet tall. And I think it would be really cool 
to be placed outside because I think that's that's where I love to paint and that's where I think you can be the messiest kind of you know you don't have to be so confined into a space um, so the whole idea is to be able to create sculptures I want to get into sculpting basically I love these falling souls but on canvas you have the idea of falling souls but this is actually you can really see them falling so you create it out of wood, but you'd have other materials as well, or paint? Yeah, I would. What do you envision? I would seal the wood so it can, no matter the weather, it can be outside. Um, but the vision kind of comes to me when I see the property too as well. You know, depending on where I'm at, where the, the, the customer wants it to as well. I can go 10 feet, 20 feet. I can go just one box in different locations. But I really think it would just be really fun just to paint outside. Just so you would paint at the place where the sculpture would be? I think that would be really fun to do. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about how you would design it. Well, I personally love my backgrounds. The backgrounds is where I think it's really at. Just the free flowingness, um, the texture too as well. Um, yeah, I, I think it's about the simplicity too. There's not much on top of it. It's literally falling souls. And I think people can relate to that that fallingness, you know, just the constant falling. Great. What's going on at the top up there? Well, actually, there is another box that was supposed to go on top, but instead, I put some paintings. Um, this is one that, I, another black and white piece. I think black and white just looks beautiful on top of just color, and I really just love that exploration of just, just finding what works, you know. It makes me think that that black and white piece at the top could actually be a sculpture, not a painting, that you could cut those out and make them actually be part of the sculpture. Well, Very hopefully the box art will lead me to sculpting. And right now in my career, I need more space. So that's really what's happening is that I did the mock-up to show people that, hey, this is a great idea, but right now I only can have this size right, right. now. Right. Yeah. yeah, well, as we grow, space can grow, but I like the idea of painting outside. Yeah, I think even painting in the outside weather. really just, there's endless options. Well, interesting. So you have this and you have the falling souls on these and the beautiful colorful backgrounds. Let's take a look at how this has evolved in your painting and your doodling. Cool. So you have a whole other set of images that we can take a look at. I do. The room full of is a transition, a transition phase of my career is well, you can see that there was a, um, a soul in the, in the room coming out, but there's also some abstract faces and uh, human bodies. I try, I'm trying to be more creative in that sense of showing more um, facial expressions and also real life imagery. So this is one of my first images that I actually took time to put objects into the room. Even the chair, the window, and even the walls, making those three lines. It's crazy what three lines can do because right. it makes a room. It makes that 3D portal. Very interesting. So where do the faces come from, these very abstract faces? When I was younger, actually, I, um, my, my father loved to doodle. So that's one thing I took from him is these abstract faces. Um, me, myself, and I is actually uh, based on just me, and I think this is a good expl uh, explanation about where I'm, like where I was when I painted it, because it's about fighting with your thoughts, fighting with yourself. You know, it's me, myself, and I, and they're all kind of tugging at each other and kind of just fighting. But you know, it's very hard just to be conscious of you know just yourself sometimes. Right, and being on the same page. I like that strong. One of them is very strong <laughs> with the colors. Wake up. <laughs> wow. This, this is kind of funny. I, I showed this at a coffee shop, and everyone that looked at it, they were like, this is how I feel when I wake up in the morning and have a cup of coffee. You know, they're just like, they're Yay. just like screaming in the mirror. And how did you choose those colors? I'm interested. So that silver is actually aerosol silver and um, with water. water uh, I used aerosol and water at the same time, and I just it happened to just be perfect. I actually um, I mix all my colors. So those colors kind of, I just mix them all on a palette and see. And what type of paint is it? I believe that's golden. Uh, it's a type of paint that you can. Acrylic? Oh yeah, acrylic paint. Yes, exactly, exactly. Cool, very interesting. 
You <laughs> like the darker purples, and you tend towards the oranges and. Well, this one, that, that orange yellow, it, I thought it was really nice on that darker background when it comes to just using that black outline. Um, a lot of people, I, I told, was told I can't show that in places because they said that it was a little too, uh, too PG-13 rated R actually. Yeah. How? It, well, because it's, a... it's censored. There, it's, it's, showing, it's showing too much, they say. Because yeah. there's a censored bar over abstract lines. Wait, That's very strange. Well, some, Interesting. Some people think they it's you know, it's more than just lines. Well, do you find that people see images that they bring to your paintings that you didn't really have there to begin with? It happens quite often because when I paint, I you know I think of myself really, and I I guess you kind of have to think about others when you paint too. But it's no. it's crazy how people it, people really just go with it. They, they see their own, what they want to see. So this little dashed line created some... Controversy. Controversy because of the censorship. I can see, I can see the censorship causing controversy. Now this one is much more cloudy. I had, still I had such a fun time painting this. Um, I painted this in the rain, actually. Um, Not outside. No, outside. Uh, no, outside, outside out, in the rain. Outside in the rain. Oh, it was raining that day. I used watercolor for the background, the, the rainbow colors, and uh, yeah, it was just such a fun time. I got the rainbow colors, and then it was uh, a aerosol and acrylic on top of that. And uh, I kind of let the background speak to me on this one. And then uh, after I got the background done, I was like, oh, I kind of see some faces on there. And I love how it's, the middle guy is grabbing that rainbow color. Mm -hmm. It's just like he's holding on to it. It's, Really, it was such a fun time painting that, absolutely. Walk away. Now this one is much more graphic. Yeah, this one is, it, it speaks to me because I mean, we all have situations in life where it's like you want to hold on to things and you have so many memories, but at the end of the day, you have to learn to walk away. And the, the shapes behind it, it represents balance. This is one of my first paintings I actually ever did. And it's, a, it's like four feet by five feet. Um, and some people, it's, I believe it's just, the red is actually heads, but some people see lungs, some people see <laughs> hearts, some people just see brains. I was thinking like lion's heads. Ooh. That's my like imagination yeah, going but, wild. But that's what I love about art, you know? Right. You, the spectator really holds what they really want to see. But I re really like the balance in that one. Yes. Oh, the sun goddess. The sun goddess I got to paint last year in my studio. It was one of my last paintings I got to do. But the, the little triangle up top in the, in the top right corner, how it comes out of the canvas, if you can check that out, it's, it's just a little thing it's, that gives it so much dimension. The magenta little? Yep, okay. right up top, yes. exactly. I'm actually, it's really funny, I'm not really good with colors. So when I mix these colors, <laughs> I, I kind of just go with my gut and they end up pretty good. Yeah, you, you definitely have a sense of a palette that you're working with at this point, which is interesting, the sort of greenish with the purple. So is that actually a frame or is that a line around the canvas that... Just a line around the canvas, it? yeah. And okay, I, I really so. like how that works. Um, I learned that from another artist. That's, how you can frame your own canvas without actually framing it. Right. I think that's brilliant. Definitely. The sun goddess, I, I, that was a good time to paint. Ooh. Walk in the desert. Those colors are cool, cool aren't they? I, um, I had, th that's actually one, two, three, four, that's seven different images, seven different doodles. So I took seven different sketches okay. and I just placed them into the desert basically. And it's really, that one's four feet by five feet and all these sketches I usually do are right. usually they're small. yeah they're like five <laughs> inches so I kind of just blow them up and end up with something that I didn't really imagine but it's the process of art and painting is just right. it's unbelievable what you can do. I like the tall face like objects that are almost transparent or you can see the sky through them. I call them sunflower. They're sunflowers. Sunflowers. Yeah. Okay. Oh, th wow. They're supposed to be flowers. But they look like people. <laughs> yes, no, exactly. <laughs> now this is completely different. Oh, there was so many transitions in this painting, but I loved how it ended up. It was phenomenal. The atomic bomb, before this, it was a, I had some abstract lettering in the background and it was very clean cut, but mm -hmm. it's so hard to make a perfect circle and, <laughs> without like using yes. like a tracer. And uh, 
you can tell that it's not perfect, but I covered it up and it looked very rustic and historic. And that's where I got the idea of having an atomic, you know, the, the idea of an explosion happened on the canvas. You know, and it's like, it's so solid in the center, but in, out around it, it's just, it's just a big, big, big mess. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, and here is another space where you've hung all your paintings. These are, this looks like an event of some sort because they're all very tightly yeah, placed. That was actually last year at an event down in Southern California. Um, it was a great event. Um, I got to be surrounded by so many great artists. Um, and it was a great experience. I'm actually going back this year as well, Kaboo. Uh, but I had about 25 paintings. Um, my buddy and I, we, before we went down, we made sure that it, they all fit. It's a, it was a space eight by uh, 24 feet. And I got, it was my first time showing at an event actually like that. And I got some great feedback. The, ab the, abstract, the abstract art was a hit. Um, but luckily this year, I get to show some new work. I'm pretty excited about going down there. So Kaboo, what is that? Kaboo, it's actually a music and art festival. So there's a lot going down there, going on down there. Um, but there's probably the top, top 50 artists in the world. I mean, muralists too as well. I mean, just spectacular art happening. Um, but there's actually a couple new ones up there that I really like. Helping Hands was a big hit down there. Good. It, people really like that one. Good. So now you're still doodling. How's it going? I'm making my way. You know, it's fun to doodle and talk, but, you know. We have a lot to talk about. <laughs> so how close is this to being done, would you say? Um, there's a lot of shadows that I need to do. Um, I'm, that's the thing about when I doodle. You never know when it's really, really done. <laughs> it's a doodle. It's a doodle. No, exactly. And, but, you know, to make 50 doodles and kind of get four that you really like, I kind of, like we talked about, the exploration about it. It's just, it's really cool. Um, later on, I'll show you some more doodles. I, I think it's really nice to be able to just not throw away a piece of paper, but just to, I think it's healthy to sketch and doodle because, right. you know, it's exercise for the brain. It's like reading. Yes, you know, I often doodle. My art is based on the doodling idea as well. And to just sit and take a break from actually thinking and just release that part of your brain is how I do it. Is I totally that something? Agree. Yeah, I, I try never to think when I doodle. But, you know, to have an idea. <laughs> no, but to have an idea is also good, too, as right. well. But sometimes I just, you know, just throw some lines in there. And it kind of comes out perfect. Like, it just happens. And once you know it's done, it, it's done. Right. Is there a sense that you get that, okay, this is done now? Yeah, I think I actually just made a, I made a little big achievement right there. I didn't know where I was going. And after that little conversation, I'm getting there. I'm about oh, good. almost there, actually. You know, it's, it's very odd. We see so many faces in their daily lives, and you can really take those faces and put them onto paper and make just a, such a cool face. That is great. So you have a whole sketchbook here that you'd like to show some pieces of. Yeah. That looks pretty close to me. I mean, I, I can see how you might want to put more shadows in. But yeah. Well, I'll get to show you That is really some. cool. So let's take a look at some of your more completed cool. drawings that you have here. So lately, I've been doing a lot of characters, little smaller characters. Um, so this sketchbook is actually a new exploration of just creativity, just doing new things that I really like to do. I really like this one. Just I do a, groups of three a lot. And I, I think that's really interesting how just threes and fives and sevens work together. So three characters, you mean? Yeah, three characters a pop. Um, and, but also, this was you know just an abstract. Uh, line work, you know, I just kind of threw lines down there and Yeah, interesting. So you're sort of breaking faces apart now. Yeah, you've gone from empty souls to faces and bodies and now you're Taking it apart. It's, Very interesting. It's actually kind of funny because um, I don't show any expressions on my um, on my souls Right, but on these ones. It's all about the expressions in the face actually there's one coming up that I, 
but they're not whole faces. No, they're not. They're not. <laughs> this one right here, it's actually really interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's I, very different. There's no, there's no hand, but there's an idea of a hand. There's these boxes of feet, but I did throw a face in, and I thought that was really nice. But the body itself is like, it reminds me of an engine. So that is another one that makes me think of sculpture. Yes, actually, this is one out of the 50 that I'm going to paint. This is okay, one I'm very good. excited about. Excellent. There's actually three coming up. I, I drew this one during the Olympics it rem when, <laughs> when, they were, when they were throwing uh, the ice skating. Right. That's when I drew this one. I really thought that was off, the little bird flying. That's what I see, at least. <laughs> this one coming up right here. This one's another one that I chose in my head. After I drew it, I was like, that's a winner. That's Just, a winner. Because you can, I feel like you can feel the, the sense of, not sadness, but I guess the sadness, the kind of the whole, like trying to hold it all together. Yeah, and they seem more three-dimensional. Maybe it's the shading that you're doing. We'll see how it translates into color, but... It's really fascinating what graphite can do, right. you know? It's, yes, and when I transition to color, it's gonna be whole, it's gonna be totally different, which is gonna be a great, it's gonna be great. This one too, the hands, they just, they really just show so much emotion when it comes to it. But I, yeah, I'm trying to sh do more of a realis realism. I think that's where I'm headed hmm. is just more realism with abstract too as well. You know, that kind of balance. It's, right. It's a good so balance. Realistic pieces within the abstract. Exactly. Interesting. Exactly. This is the mind's not made, made up type of person. You know, he's just kind of hands crossed. And even though there's no face, kind of have that idea of I face. I see a, sort of a face. Yeah, but it's... But I have a very abstract <laughs> kind of a mind. But the shadows really make everything pop, too, right. as well. Which I do is, like that. I think you should definitely explore that with the kinds of colors that you choose. I, I try to. So tell us briefly, where can we see your art? Right now I'm showing in San Francisco at a Cafe International. Okay. But um, realistically, I try to update my website as often as I can with not just sketches, but my paintings, my photography, and uh, just my projects that I have coming up. Well, excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for showing us your art and actually completing a piece of artwork while you were here. Thank you for having me, Sally. Oh, you're welcome.